There are very few content creators on this platform that had as much skill and potential as John Swan. A 20 year old Australian YouTuber that had his peak had around 172,000 subscribers. He's now sitting on around 165,000 subscribers with the numbers still only going down to this day. So where did it all go wrong? Well, I am here to tell you the story of John Swan's lost credibility. John started his channel back in 2014. The content that is still public to this day can take you back to 2017, where John was just making your average commentary videos on popular things to hate on, like when net neutrality took place on the internet and they made a response with a very smug video about their victory. Many commentary channels had spoken about this on their channels and one of these people was actually John Swan. This is a grown man with a fidget spinner, eclipse glasses, a Santa costume and a Nerf gun. What is life? You can also see from early commentary videos such as How Just Destiny Broke the Law that John clearly had a passion for video making and editing since for a small channel that had only around 6,000 subscribers, he had some impressive editing. Lieutenant Cobra is a 15 year old YouTube commentator who made a video on Just Destiny talking about all the problematic aspects of his channel, from his content to his thumbnails, as well as documenting the hostile Twitter exchanges he had with him. LT Cobra is someone that John became civil with and had publicly interacted with on Twitter. Them and another creator that goes by the name of Cordwit formed a friendship circle where the three can be seen on Twitter interacting with each other showing their bromance. When John had only around 6,000 subscribers he managed to get in contact with Dream and asked the guy if he was down to do an interview for a Minecraft documentary which to date has 1 million views. Now Dream had around 1 million subscribers so it still surprises me that the guy did an interview with someone with around 6,000 subscribers. Good guy Dream. Well John wouldn't find his fame until he decided to go after the creator Susie Liu. Someone whose content revolved around them just sitting down and watching anime while saying nothing. Now Susie had a big, uh, a channel, so it caught the eye of John Swan, who decided to make a video on her. In this video, John talks about how it was a re-upload, since the original got taken down due to violating the harassment guidelines. I think it was pretty obvious to see who was the one behind that one. To date, this video has 2 million views, and was uploaded onto the channel when John had only around 12,000 subscribers. John also made a follow-up video which led up to him getting hundreds of thousands of more views onto the channel, with more subscribers in the bag. John's next target was someone that was known on American TV in the early 2000s. I'm talking about about Chris Hansen. Chris made his career in the TV world with his show called How to Catch a Predator, where he would catfish people to come to a house where these people were expecting to see an underage girl, but instead saw a Chris come out of the closet. Lots of people have voiced their opinion on Chris' show before, where the main criticism is that these people never actually got a chance to commit the crime, so they shouldn't actually be arrested. Now, to a degree, I agree with that, but these men were dedicated to doing these disgusting actions, and some even drove miles from their home to meet these girls, like they had already committed to doing it and came that far so morally for me it's hard to just say let them off with a warning. Well after Chris was fired and then sued and then arrested, the guy tried to start fresh on YouTube with his own channel. He decided to cover YouTube's most infamous psycho, Onision. <laughs> Chris is probably the only person in the internet that made Onision look like a victim, since the man had even doxxed him and went to his house, forcing Onision to call the police, since he thought he was being harassed, which he definitely was. 911, what are you recording? Hi, uh, there's a person who's been stalking me online and they just showed up to my house. Okay, and they're outside now? Yes, they're knocking on my door. Okay. John's first coverage on Chris gained over 3 million views and held up the title for the most viewed video on John's channel. John himself got harassed by Chris after the guy decided to pay a hacker to dox John and release his public information. The hacker decided to dox John's family also, where he leaked photos of John's young sister who has clearly had nothing to do with the situation. This led many people such as myself feeling sympathy for John since no one really deserves to be doxxed and have their private information put out publicly. It even got so bad for John where he actually was debating whether to drop the Chris Hansen series since the harassment was just too demotivating for him to continue. The harassment I've received over the past few months has not been amazing. I've been subjected to things that um, has taken a, a toll on me. It's, it has taken a toll on me. Um, and I am not ready to go ahead at this point with that video. John's third popular series is covering the drama between Deji and KSI, and how Deji pretty much subbotted 10 million subscribers and just is a really scummy dude altogether. These videos were in collaboration with Nick Diorio, someone who was friends with John, and one of the videos was actually directly uploaded to their channel.
John and Cordwit were planning on making a video on Dream since they thought they had enough dirt on the guy to prove that he was just cheating ass with a huge ego. John even showed a clip of Dream on Twitter and titled it, Holy shit, Dream is like an actual douchebag. Well, I was just saying, I, I didn't, I thought Kai didn't believe he had an ego. I was just going to say, because I went on a podcast with him and he was telling this story about like, he always knew he was going to blow up and his advice to up and comers was to be super confident to the point of arrogance. Before I even posted my first video, there was like the six month period where I was like, you know what? Like, it can't be that hard to do YouTube. So I was like, let me look into it. Let me do the research. Let me read about it. Let me watch videos on it. I, I had no idea. I had no idea that I was going to get to this point this quickly, but I, I was being plan. cocky. I was being cocky. I was to the point where I was like bragging, like, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to be at a million subs. And he said he used to leverage favors from the community by promising them he'd blow up and remember them. It, I, I had no subs and I was trying to get a favor from somebody <laughs> that, cause I thought it would help me. I wanted, it was really dumb. I wanted some like rank on some server that would then help me get my name out there. And I was asking for it for free. After someone decided to post John Swan's tweet onto a dream subreddit, the man himself saw the comment and replied stating that John Swan a year prior to this had gone on discord and began trolling people pretending to be him. This guy is bad news. A while back after I interviewed him for a Minecraft documentary, he changed his profile picture and name on Discord to mine and started DMing people pretending to be me. He sent people the n-word and a lot of other stuff, as well as said sexual stuff while claiming that it was me, where he would then from his main Twitter vouch that it was me, and said that we were amazing friends and linked the documentary to prove it. Once I confronted him about it, very nicely given the circumstances, he said that his friend had hacked his accounts and done it. I didn't reply to him and unfollowed him, and I don't think he is super fond of me since then. John Swan then proceeded to respond to these accusations by making a Twitter thread stating that someone had hacked his computer and done these things on his Discord. Dream has made accusations about me on Reddit to try and smear my credibility, so I will respond here in detail to ensure that everything is perfectly clear. Back probably a year ago, I was visiting some family friends. One of the guys I was talking to was much younger than me and wanted to know about YouTube and what I did to make videos. Since I didn't have my PC with me, I logged onto Discord on his laptop and showed him some things that I had screenshotted and sent to other people. I foolishly didn't log out of my account. He decided it would be a good idea to start trolling on my account with his friends and use an old account as well as my account to have conversations with about three different people. One of these people were Harley TBS. He used an alt account, changed his name and profile picture to Dream and started saying really strange stuff. It was like 12 year old humour. I was told the n-word was said but I have seen no evidence of that. But I did find conversations about a Minecraft sex mod and other weird shit. As soon as I found out about it I logged out of my discord on all accounts and called up the parents of the guy who was involved. I spoke to him and explained to him how this stuff could have great impacts on other people, but he was young and didn't get it. But I did get him to change the account back and cease his conversation. As far as I know, he only messaged one person as Dream, that being Harley TBS, since he was the only person that was engaging at the time. That's the context of the situation, which I explained to Dream. Really fucked up that he would try and twist it like this. There was no vouching on my main Twitter as well. That's just a lie and didn't happen. This was exclusively Discord. To present the story that this some big thing where I would message multiple people as Dream to try and ruin him is categorically untrue. It just shows his true character. Like I just read out, one of the people that were trolled were Harley TBS, someone who at the time took John's side and publicly made videos saying this. Just wanted to hop on and speak about the John Swan thing because I think I have a few things to explain in that situation. But back when I first met John, before I knew him, I received some messages from his account, which included a account that was called Dream, right? And I messaged the account called Dream and it sent me the n-word and all of other things, right? So not knowing John, I sent that to Dream and since then I believe that I was partially responsible for the fact that Dream now believes that John did all these things because when I spoke to John and John clarified, I didn't believe him because it seemed like he was using an excuse, but I don't believe that John is responsible for anything, okay? I believe that obviously it was probably someone else seeing how the words were written now and knowing John a lot better. So I don't hold John responsible, but I do hold myself partially responsible for what Dream believes now. However, I do believe the way that Dream has represented it, including cutting a lot of context and trying to turn it into John being unfollowed sort of thing, I feel like that's kind of scummy. Dream then begins to question on Twitter why John even brought this to Twitter since the Reddit post had only 20 likes and no one was even making a big deal about it. Dream also shows the DMs between him and John on Twitter from 2020 when he had confronted him about this shit happening. John Swan complained to Dream that he felt like he was forced to respond since the dude 
who'd then had 18 million subscribers and said, this shit spreads like wildfire. The two then begin to have a back and forth on Twitter, arguing like two retards fighting, one might say. People like Bo Blacks had publicly stated that it is baffling that Dream doesn't believe John Swan. For Dream to not believe John's explanation is completely baffling to me. Like, what would be the motive behind John Swan even doing all of that? Burning his connection with a big YouTuber, risking stuff being said about him behind the scenes because of it, and then also lying to that YouTuber about it on top of that? There's just no logical explanation for doing that, outside of maybe a quick attention grab by saying you talked to Dream on Twitter. People like Oggy I've seen, Nick Diorio, and Tipster, Optimus, and Jaden all came out publicly defending John Swan since they had no reason to believe he was lying. John was also experiencing massive attention on his Twitter and was bragging about how he was uncancelable. Dream had gone onto his Twitch and then streamed to over 300,000 people showing that he believes why John Swan is a liar and was the person behind the Discord account the entire time. I rest my case. Okay, no, I, don't, I don't rest my case. That's not it. That's actually not it. If that was it, that, that's probably enough. But that's not it. That's not it. He says yup. So that's in his vocabulary. That's, in, that's an, interesting, an interesting thing. Very interesting. He happens to say yup. His 12-year-old friend happens to say yup, just like him. After Dream Stream, John decided to just say fuck it and make an 18 page document against Dream Stream. I also think it's worth mentioning that John agreed to debate with Dream on Drama Alert but decided to bail out on it because he stated that his manager said not to do it. Then, not long after John's response, Nick Durio made a statement on Twitter called John Swan Lied About Dream. In this Twitter post, Nick talks about how he was shown proof about John Swan lying about Dream and risked him and all the others' credibility just to save his own ass. Turkey Tom was apparently the one who told Nick about this. Tom found out via someone who is anonymous and apparently had no reason to lie. Whether that person is a liar or not is irrelevant since John came out with his own statement addressing his lie. So yeah, the whole thing was bullshit. People like Tom and Keemstar and Willie Mac already knew he was full of shit since they were not blinded by friendship or being biased. But with the people who defended him, who can blame them? John, as their friend, lied to their face and got them to risk their credibility for his own gain. John probably owned up because he was backed into a corner and by that point, Nick had already posted it publicly. Dream saw that John had been owning up to his lie and stated this. It's come to my attention that John Swan has confessed to his friends about lying about me after being confronted with new evidence and has deleted his response after my stream. Before Nick had gone public about it, he and John got into call where Nick went to confront John about the evidence he was provided to show that John was a liar. John responded with, if you know the answer, you know the answer. If you know the answer, then you know the answer. So you did it! That's what I'm gonna say. I, I, I... John, come on! I'm not... No, I'm not. I don't know. Who knows? You do have to feel sorry for people like Tipster and Augie since their response felt more emotional than others. I'm extremely, extremely disappointed. You allowed us to put our credibility on the line to defend you, even though you knew the whole time you were lying. But unfortunately, we're finding out the hard way that even friends can lie too. People like Bo Blacks and Nick just seemed pissed off, which who the fuck wouldn't be? LT Cobra is someone who knew the whole time that John was lying and publicly sided with him during this entire thing. To be fair to Cobra, I can understand not wanting to backstab a good friend that has helped you in the past, but I think Nick and the others did deserve to know. Harley TBS made a video pretty much demanding that John should apologize to him. That I'm owed an apology from John for the slander he spread on my name, for the lies he told me for the past year as I continued to consider his side and defend him, feeling bad for him, for the fact that I may have lied about him. I, I am owed an apology from you, John. I am owed it. And I haven't heard even a second of an apology. You haven't even whispered my name in your apology. You didn't even give me a chance. Pyman is someone that was a big fan of John and took a lot of inspiration from the dude. The guy wanted to be a YouTube commentator. When Pyman was 15, he was sexting someone that was of the age of 12, and John used that to insinuate that Pyman was a pedophile. John leaked photos of Pyman saying that she was 12 and he feels like a pedo. Now, when someone says that about themselves, it doesn't look that good. But 12 to 15 isn't some red kiwis or mini lad stuff. They're both teenagers going through puberty. John begins to publicly shame Pyman for not asking for the girl's age. Personally, I think Pyman is an in someone definitely at this point in his life needed to touch some grass. From this situation, I do not think he's a pedophile. John continued tweeting about the situation by saying this. How can you control that? Step one is to remove yourself from the internet to ensure that you will never fall guilty to the same urges again. Remember, you are being turned on by a literal child. Step two is get some kind of therapy or help because this can't go on, dude. To me, this isn't any kind of predator shit. This is literally two underage people sexting. John also decided to join Pie Man's live stream where he just ripped the guy a new one in front of hundreds of people to watch. This... This is, like, this is not good. 
this this is something I believe you, you need to get help with uh, in some way. I don't know whichever avenue you want to take with that, but I think you need to get help because these are the sort of feelings if you're trying to deny them now. Well, earlier, you know, you said in her DMs that these were feelings that you had. I know you're trying to deny them, but I mean, if you legitimately feel this way, and I'm not going to ask you to respond or, or say if you do or not, right? But if you legitimately feel this way, you need some help, right? You need to go, you need to log off. You need to like leave online settings because you cannot have a public platform at, when you've admitted to this stuff. And this stuff is going to haunt you now forever online. Like you've said that, that's come out. People are always going to know that the people are going to know. That's what you're going to be known for, right? You can't, you can't stay online with that on your record. Pie Man is someone that isn't really good socially with people. In fact, most of his friends at the time were actually online. He had put out his suicide note out on Twitter and John decided to say that the kid was suicide baiting because he didn't go through with it. But at the end of the document, he said, I might just upload my next video and then fucking kill myself. And I'm just, it came out later. Okay, well, he didn't, he wasn't, he, those weren't genuine. That wasn't a, a genuine thing. He like literally like turned around and said he's fine. Um, so he tried to weaponize a suicide attempt to try and to try and make us feel bad about him saying he was being attracted to a Tovio. And within the same stream, John was taking the moral high ground and saying that he was trying to help Pine Man the entire time. And I told them the first thing I got on there, I actually went on because it was like, guys, turn off the stream. This is you shouldn't be streaming about this. Like, what are you doing? It was like a bunch of him and like two other friends of his. And they were talking about the, the drama about this 12 year old stuff. And I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? on stream. In recent times, a call got leaked between Pie Man and John, where John was supposed to be apologizing, but the dude never actually said the word sorry. One of John's excuses for blowing this drama up is him saying that he had not long blown up himself and forgot how much influence he had actually had. You know what? You know, it's fine. Uh, we all, we all over-dramatize over things sometimes. Um, so that's fine. Uh, I don't hold any hard feelings against you for doing that. Um, okay. But getting involved in this was a mistake in the first place, but I think it all goes back to a few months ago. I had just blown up in a big way, and I don't think I was fully aware of how much of an audience I really had. And I think um, recently I've gotten a lot more perspective with this dream stuff and a little bit before as well. Um, about how much influence I actually hold. Now to me that does not make sense, but when making such heavy accusation and as incriminating as these, you should know it doesn't matter how big you are, this type of stuff can always have a snowball effect, even if you're big or small. So for me that's the one time this argument cannot work. But before I move on with this part of the video, I just want to say that I'm aware of the weird shit Pie Man has done not too long ago, and that stuff would have been worth criticizing way more than two minors sexting. Pie Man isn't perfect, I know that, trust me. After the drama with Pie Man and Dream, John decided to take a three month break from uploading onto his YouTube channel. John returned on the 21st of May 2021 with a video about the streaming site Mixer and how it failed. And well, this video compared to his others didn't get as many views. But okay, fine. His next one will be. Oh. Oh god, he got less views than the one before. Uh, wow. I mean, he made another Chris Hansen video, which got over 100k views. That's not bad, Swan. Oh, what's this? Dream got outed for cheating in Minecraft again? What's this? John uploaded a video. I emphasize with Dream. Okay, well, this video didn't need to exist, and I think he knows that since he took the video down. Dream, the Minecraft YouTuber I got into a bit of a spat with over three and a half months ago now, has admitted to cheating in the Minecraft speedruns he was being accused of cheating in. You put out this pace bin, uh, going over everything, and you know, there's a lot of things in here to criticize, but I tried to do my very best and kind of step back for a little bit, kind of give it perspective, and think about where I was, you know, three and a half months ago, and try and draw parallels to what I was feeling, thinking, and doing, and to what Dream did felt and did. His next video where it looks like he's about to cry is where he addresses that he can't live off his savings forever. He also says he doesn't understand why he is still affected with this drama and he doesn't understand why his views aren't climbing back up how they used to be and how people are just unsubbing to him. Channel is holding on by a thread at the moment. Um, I've completely been kicked out of all of the YouTube recommendations uh, and the reason for that is that whenever people see my video in their feeds they hit the unsub button uh, because I assume some people just don't like me anymore. They don't want to be subbed. Um, some people just don't remember me and don't want to be subbed. 
and I see some people don't, just don't care about the content and they want to unsub. Honestly, it was sad watching this video, mostly because it was so pathetic. I remember leaving a comment myself saying I don't think that many people really care about the dream drama anymore. And to be honest, looking at his views, they are fine for his channel size. He just isn't in the algorithm, but he still had thousands of fans that would still tune in to watch his content. John is not the same person who lied the dream. John is not the same person who caused that controversy in relation to me. How much do you want to bet on that one? Uh, excuse me, John Swan. Why did you lie to Dream? Mr. Swan? Mr. Swan, I need to know why you lie to Dream. I'm in the park and I look insane right now. Uh, but I just want to know, why did you lie to Dream? And do you think Cammy's a pedophile? Cammy is a small YouTuber with around 1,000 subscribers. He is someone that I myself ever interact with in a friendly manner, and I generally like the guy, so I won't be biased in this part as much as I can to help it. From what I've been told in the past, John and Cammy were in the same friendship group on Twitter. The two definitely interacted in Discord. This was in group chats and in other things such as voice calls. Around December last year, I'd asked Cammy why he had unfollowed John Swan and why John Swan had unfollowed him. He had told me that they had parted ways since he didn't like how him and some of the others in the group chat spoke to him. Some of these other people that were quite nasty in the group chat according to Cammy will be mentioned later. I have no idea to what exactly was said in these DMs or calls but it was enough for Cammy to say fuck it and part ways from these people. I mean if you are familiar with Cammy and follow him on Twitter you might recognise me saying smearing shit on face. Well this is a meme that they've started against Cammy and obviously the guy didn't appreciate that. He embraces the meme now but <laughs> it's a bit weird to be honest. So I'm going to assume that John isn't very fond of Cammy since they had a mini fallout. A girl that goes by the name of Liz released a Google Doc stating that Cammy had essentially groomed and manipulated her. It is actually in recent times that John Swan had a conversation with Dumpy saying that he is a groomer. With the age gaps being 15 and 18, Lizzie in her Google Doc proceeds to show the DMs between the two when they were both sexting. Lizzie also had a boyfriend and proceeds to sex Cammy anyway. Looking through these DMs, we can see that it's your classic young cringe flirting. I don't want to read out the entire thing since I might die, but I do want to read out this part though since it's pretty funny, I can't lie. Sorry, I probably killed the mood. No, it's fine. You didn't at all. Well, do you want to continue? Sure. You sure? You seemed hesitant. I'm sure. I'm really positive. Ah, do you want the cami cock? Ha ha ha. Shush. Now you might be thinking, what does this have to do with John Swan? Well, it got put out there that John Swan was actually involved with writing a Google document against Cammy that pretty much slanders his name. This is where things get a little bizarre to me. John states on Destiny Stream that he had no involvement in making the Google document. Well, I was not involved in creation of the document. Let's you didn't say that. My... You just said I wasn't involved. No, no, no. no. Well, if I said that I was wrong. I was not involved like in the writing of the document. That, that's what I meant. But proceeded to say that he did when Tipster called him out in a VC that Tipster leaked. I, mean, right I, I guess it comes up to a difference of opinion because that sounds like you were involved to me. Maybe you didn't write the initial draft, but you were involved in the creation of the document. It's such a small minuscule degree. I mean, it, I disagree. It, it, I respectfully disagree. How? If I came, if they, they sent me like three things you're that are like- You're reviewing this thing and you're it. making changes to the thing. This They're asking you for your opinion on this thing and you're making changes as you see fit. You were involved in the creation of this document. I do feel a little bit bad for John that he can't trust anyone, that even people like Tipster will leak this call just because it's funny, I guess. <laughs> like everyone that's getting into a call with John Swan is leaking it. Now with John saying that he was involved slightly, let's read what parts John Swan wrote and see how slightly they really are. Cam took advantage of a minor in a vulnerable position and used her for his pleasure. Now I don't know about you, but saying Cammy took advantage of a minor isn't only slanderous but completely false. From the DMs between Cammy and the girl, we can see Cammy ask if she is comfortable and she says she is always comfy. Then not long after that, Cammy asks the girl if she is sure because he doesn't want to take advantage of her. For John to miss out this very important detail is not only stupid, but almost on the verge of just being a complete evil cunt. And I refuse to believe that John missed this information, since in a call between him and Cammy, John shows all the DMs that he was shown from the girl. If we see in another section what Liz wrote, we can see this. Liz's version states, after this continued, he made jokes and started liking it after I asked him if he did. He continued and tried asking me if I was okay Okay, multiple times. He's aware of my age by the way, so he kept asking if it was weird or not. I tell him I didn't think it was weird and I really didn't think much of it. As it continued on, he said he was very hard. You could say he basically told me that he was pleasured by what I was saying to him. Now, this is what Liz had wrote in the Google document. John had changed it slightly. Cam used me for his own sexual pleasure where I was in a vulnerable state. He knew what I was doing was wrong. Comparing his actions to those people who have been cancelled from the community. He said how I made him happy. He called me cute. Said I was his darling. 
darling and made me feel appreciated and loved. But all he ever wanted was sexual pleasure and he used me to get what he wanted. I'm ashamed that I've ever took part in any of it. Just by saying Cam used me in the sentence doesn't only become untrue, but a complete utter slander towards him. John isn't a dumb guy, so I am 100% sure that he knew what he was doing. Now, when all of this got leaked, John messaged the person that was leaking all the information. John stated that he forgot he was involved in writing the paragraphs of slandering Cammy for essentially being a horny bastard. Now, I don't know about you, but giving his past on dealing with the public, I think this may be another bird lie. Speaking of birds, there is another bird out there that I'm not going to let him get away with his shitty behaviour. <laughs> Dr. Skipper is a content creator who is well known for his iceberg videos on YouTube, with his most popular one having 700,000 views, and with his channel nearly 90,000 subscribers, he is not doing bad for himself. Well, according to John, he had actually gone to Dr. Skipper to ask advice for the Google Doc. And yeah. I don't know, I think it's weird how, like, fucking Hypo and Skipper are, like, sort of teasing, like, a fucking, like, allegation, like, it's a fucking, like, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't involved with that either. Um... I, I told them because I wanted advice, and then they kind of just did their own thing. Some of Skipper's tweets before the doc was even released is him atting Cammy on Twitter saying shit like this. Happy Easter at Sigma Mel quotes. You had a good run, Sigma Mel quotes. And he's then showing a McDonald's application to get hired, insinuating that his career is about to get ruined. And he even hyped up the drama beforehand by tweeting, someone's about to get fucking packed soon. Anyone's want to reserve a seat to the shit show? People like Smaggles decided to call this bullshit out by saying, you are so fucking full of shit, it's not funny. You made a fake copycat Discord server to trick one of your friends former friends and decided not to talk to another former friend with some bullshit allegations. You are a fucking snake. John Swan is a snake. You both should be exiled. Wait, how is Skipper involved with this? He tweeted this out so he knew the situation beforehand was going to Cammy about the allegations. I was told that the doc was being made and that he was talking to a 15 year old. I didn't have access to reading the doc till today with along everyone else. I wasn't going to leak anything because I was told not to. I was also told to not tell Cammy. Then someone else joined in by asking what is his involvement with the document with Skipper just saying that he had no involvement, nor did anyone come towards him. This is a lie since John Swan himself literally said in a call with Cammy that he went to Skipper for advice. I, I told them because I wanted advice. This at least proves that one of them is a liar in this situation. Skipper also got called out because of the tweets that I showed previously of him making fun of Cammy. We can also see other people on Twitter that are asking Skipper why he was even involved in his response. It's always just him saying how he never saw the document. Liar. Eventually, he makes a tweet just saying my bad because there a lot of people just started coming at him. Then, when the pressure probably got too much for Skipper, he decided to double down and act like he had made no tweets to begin with. I'm just going to make videos and keep my head in the sand. I don't even know what's happening anymore. I think for Skipper to tease of something of this magnitude is cruel to do and he should have kept his head in the sand long before he made his tweets. Alright, Cammy, thank you for coming on this epic YouTube channel. I'm going to ask you, there's seven questions I just want to go through quickly. And I've already mm -hmm. shown you them, you've already had a look. Uh, so let's start yeah. with number one, which is, at this point in time, are you and John Swan cool? And if so, otherwise, do you have any grudges against him? Um, me and John are not cool. That is, um, that is something that will, I doubt I'll be, I don't, I doubt I'll ever be cool with John ever again, I'm going to be honest. You seemed alright like, in the call you had. Well, no, because, like, I mean, the thing with that is, like, I kind of, like, went into that call knowing that John was going to lie to me, but I couldn't prove it. So, I decided to, like, act, like, sort of, like, neutral, so, like, I don't go, like, too aggro or anything. I'm surprised you were really cool about some of the stuff that you were talking about. Like, there was one point in that interview, or well, not interview, sorry, the call. Where he says, oh, just stop talking to 15-year-olds. I mean, I don't know how that... Uh, did you get annoyed by that comment when he said that? Because you... Yeah, I, I was I was slightly annoyed, but I couldn't really, like, get... I couldn't really, like, get angry at them. I couldn't be, like, fucking... Yeah, John. Yeah, John, you're the one who fucking six and calls with fucking 15-year-olds and LT Kerber watching fucking, like, porn and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that, is, that would have been a good comeback. But, yeah, I guess you, you just didn't want to have an argument, really. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I just want to be like be over with. All right. So have you actually spoken uh, after after the call got leaked or not really? Uh, no. I'm some some sure he, uh, he knows it got leaked. I know not. I, I know not other people have talked. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows that. Like the call's public. 
And I'm guessing he's not happy with that. I'm not too sure. I don't really care, to be honest. Yes, yeah, fair enough. I, I, I don't blame fuck you. Not, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right, so what are your thoughts on Skipper's involvement in this situation? Like, with his whole tweets? I just think he's, like... I don't really have, like, a sort of, like, take. I, I don't really know, like, what I can really, like, say to it. Because, like, he wasn't, like, involved in, like, the writing. He just knew that it existed. I don't know. I just think it's, like, really, like, slimy. And I think it kind of, like, shows that, like, they weren't, that, like, John, at least, wasn't doing this in, like, the best faith possible. Because I think if you, like, I think if he was, like, really bothered, I think, like, only, like, four people would know, that being John, the girl, Haha, yeah, and Emma. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's So, I don't know, I, I, just, I just think, like, like Skip and knowing kind of just, like, solidifies the fact to me that it was malicious. Oh, yeah, have you, have have, I talked to have, have you talked to um, Skip yeah, yeah. I've tried to, but, like, he's just ignoring me, so, like, fuck that guy. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking guys in this call. All right, so <laughs> well, we are talking about Johnson after all. That's true. That's so true. At base. All right. Was it wrong, in your opinion, to message that girl in the first place due to the age gap being fifteen and eighteen? Um, yes, I would. I agree. I agree that what I agree that like it. Um, it kind of it goes against like um my morals and as well as like morals that I've like put out to myself like on like like through videos, but. Like, I don't think, like, I don't think I, like, took advantage of them, but, like, I don't know, I think, like, that age gap was, like, slightly dodgy. Yeah, no, I don't think, that, I don't think you took advantage, but has anyone actually used the argument against you yet, saying that minors can't consent? Um, yeah, haha, yeah, haha, yeah, did. Okay, what's, what do you think about that argument? I mean, I mean, I don't think the word consent should be used in this situation, I think it should, I think the word should be mutual, like, it wasn't me just, like, sort of, like, sexually harassing them. If that makes no, sense. No, personally, I've I've known people in these type of relationships when I was around 15 that dated, like, women that have dated people that are 18, and I never mm -hmm. had a problem with it, personally, because, well, it wasn't, it wasn't like they were public figures, and it doesn't matter, because Twitter doesn't really give a shit if it's not, if it's not a public figure, if that makes sense, but... True. So, yeah, personally, I wouldn't have that age gap myself, but I don't think it's some, like, Jimmy Savile, Lion Maker, Red Kiwis, Mini Lad kind of age gap, so I, I don't think it was worth even like i feel like if they did care which john swan and all that was saying they did i feel like they would have tried to actually reach to you in private which they didn't or maybe even reach the girl's parents anything else i don't know why it had to go public i don't understand me neither i mean like i mean like she wanted to go public so yeah she did she uh i remember john showing you the dms of her saying that she wants to go public yeah, yeah and then he's like okay you can either go document or document it was like, <laughs> it was like document with your name attached or document without your name attached. It's like, um, it's like the political compass memes of like, um, allegations. It's like document or document pretty much. It's like insane. How did Liz even get in contact with John Swan and some of the others? Did she like have a platform herself or was she followed by them on Twitter or what's going on there? Well, she went to one of them, um, John, um, her and John have a mutual friend and through that mutual friend, um, she got in contact with John. Was this mutual friend involved in writing the document? No. No, they weren't. Okay. Do you know who they are? are they Are they a public figure, or do you want to just keep them anonymous? Um, I'm, I mean, then, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, if you... They're known in the community. All right. Um, It's A-Star, um, if you've ever heard of them. I've heard... The name's familiar, yeah. Yeah, it's them. Okay. Um, they're the person who got them in contact with John. And as for the other people, like Haha Ye and Emma, um, John got her, and got the girl in contact with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, they, they made like a group chat where they came about like writing the document. Oh yeah, no, I remember. I remember him screen sharing that with you and showing going through DMs. And he was his argument was that he didn't yeah. actually have much involvement in that conversation. Yeah, e even even though like either she like shows like DMs of like me, of like him him and her like talking. I don't know. It's fucking weird. It is weird, because he, he claims that he wasn't involved, but if you see the bits that he changed in the Google documents, some of that shit is a bit... It seems almost incriminating, mm -hmm. with the whole mm -hmm. Cam it took advantage of a yes. young underage. Like, I don't understand that. Yes, exactly. But Which kind of brings me on to I... this next question. Sorry, no, go on. No, go on. I mean, like, I was... that's all I really have to say. It, yeah. it, it, it just kind of links to the next next question, but was the Google Doc mm. incriminating? And if, if it was, uh, who do you think to, takes more responsibility in it being... An incriminating document against you would that go be John Swan? John, definitely. Okay, John, definitely John. Because um, if you look for like the edit history, 
of um the document. Yeah. Um, he changes like very like he changes like very significant things, which should sort of like um change the way that the document's perceived. Like he frames it in like a way um that makes me look like some like sort of like malicious actor who like fucking preys on children. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with him saying it was a whole taking advantage thing. But would you, were you are you thinking about taking any like legal action with this or re- reporting it somewhere or is that is that probably probably not probably not because you know like, it could be it is kind of defamation slander you could label it as that well I mean like yeah but I lost like I lost like ten subscribers I didn't lose any like monetary gain and, and like because the thing is I have like one point like zero three k and now I have like one point one k so if anything I've benefited from this I suppose. Okay, I guess that's a nice way of looking at it. <laughs> it's a shame that your, your name had to get dragged through the mud for it to happen, but... Well, look, all right. Well, um, I guess I'm doing better right now, I suppose. Yeah, definitely, since more stuff has come up with John, especially the whole gay porn thing. I don't know if I want to talk about that, but, to be honest, but... Oh, oh that, that's, that's just funny. Like, I don't think there's anything like there. It's just, like, a funny thing. It's to, just like, a funny thing. Like, it, people are saying, oh, he's watching gay porn with minors. It's, like, the worst thing ever. It's not really, since, you know... The Lieutenant Cobra is the one that screenshot it. John clicked on it. Well, yeah, because you know, well, yeah, um, pardon me. It's not like he's gone at the same with like, oh guys, you want to watch, watch this fucking like gay BBC yeah, porn? No, no, yeah, it's, it's nothing. Like, it's just a ah. funny meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just something that you wouldn't want public, but it's like funny. Yeah, I know <laughs> people are saying, oh, he's watching porn with children. I think that's a bit okay. I guess it's like I think, I think that's a bit. I think that's a bit disingenuous. It is. It's like giving a taste. It's like taste of his own medicine kind of shit. It's like what he did with you, kind of not really, but I don't know. Okay, <laughs> it's just really funny. It is funny. It's all kind of full circle. But how did you even get in contact with the girl, Lizzie? Um, we were like we were like friends on Discord, pretty much. Is that how you met? Um, we met on like Twitter because like she um. She, like, used to follow me. Now I have her, like, blocked. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I'm, I'm assuming, well, in John's and, like, words, are you staying away from 15-year-olds, Cammy? <laughs> yes, of course I am. All right, brilliant. Sorry, what was you going to say? Um, yeah, she used to, like, follow me on Twitter. I have her blocked. And, like, we were, um... With, with like, sometimes being, like, the same, like, service together. And, um... would sometimes, like, being, like, calls at the same time. And then we just, like, added each other on Discord and just, like, became, like, on decent terms has she been speaking about it publicly um i'm not too sure i don't follow any of her accounts oh, okay i wasn't sure if you can have is she on a private twitter account i'm guessing yes that is like that is like where she's most active oh, okay all right okay so the last question is where where are you going from here of your channel are you gonna make a video well, talking about this or um i've i mean i don't know i think i think at some point i may end up like i may end up doing it but probably like not and for like the re- for like um the foreseeable future but um at the end of 2021 i i said that like my um pyro video would be like the last like drama video i make for the foreseeable future and now i'm moving into more like um film and tv like criticism videos so a bit like with the sex education one you did yes yes exactly okay so you're like moving away from drama okay i can oh yeah yeah so it's like i guess this is like oddly convenient so it gives you like a proper like out from like covering drama topics okay all right i think we've covered everything then thank you for coming on cammy and no yeah. problem you fucking nuts. <laughs> John Swan got into a voice call with Cammy to discuss everything with him and to explain that he didn't have much involvement. From this clip, we can see John say to Cammy, not much would have changed even if he didn't change any parts of the document. With or without my editing, it would have been the same thing. Just maybe grammar and spelling mistakes. That would have been the extent. Which is a complete lie because looking at the screenshot, we can see is a significant difference. John also says how he doesn't even need to go to Cammy about this kind of stuff because they weren't on talking terms. I'd say I can understand why you wouldn't feel like the need to like come to me with this. Yeah, because we weren't cool, really. really. I didn't have any like. I didn't have any any obligation, really. I suppose. Yeah, but... yeah of course. But, like... I don't know. I I I still wish I maybe had. Um, 
When it actually comes to allegations as serious as manipulating a minor sexually, it is 100% important to contact the person being accused if you have contact, which John Swan did. I don't see this as a good excuse and I don't think it was right for John to do this. There are two sides to every story and his side is one of the most important ones since he was the one being accused. The one thing I will give John for is for saying sorry to Cammy, except in the same breath he says stop hanging around with 15 year olds to make it sound less genuine. I'm really, really fucking sorry that this happened really like genuinely genuinely this is so fucked um it true it was it was it <laughs> it was pretty fucked but so were those fucking dms man i, I know stop fucking I know. hanging around with 15 year olds Fuck. Uh, <laughs> it's weird i know i know i know i know stop doing it good guy john swan John Swan should have known better in all of these situations, and I think Tipster is right by saying it doesn't seem like he has learned anything from the first situation. I see people on Twitter now calling John Swan out for watching gay porn with minors in a call. Oh, nice, you're on fucking Pornhub. Let's you not go to it. How the fuck? No, but how did he get here? <laughs> He's gotta be huge. He's gotta be huge. He's gotta. No, yeah, he is. He has to, right? Oh, oh god, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> Whoa, it looks on. big. It looks massive. Why are you doing this? Oh, it's fucking eight, nine inches, that. Oh, fuck. It's massive. It's a large, large. <laughs> That's not even fully erect. Personally, he didn't intentionally watch porn with them. Plus, it wasn't even him sharing the screen. So if anybody thinks John is a freak for this, well, they are wrong. John Swan was a creator that had so much promise and potential, but threw it all away for some dumb lies and petty revenge. John's videos are still something that is impressive to look back on, since his writing and editing is pretty amazing. But why support someone that is willing to lie his way into a void? I've been Wacky TV, and until next time, if you know the answer, you know the answer, mate.